winner of the CFL Grey Cup champion himself, Randy Ambrosi. Seven years now you've been on the job, and almost every single time we do this interview, you're putting out some sort of major fire with a franchise in trouble or rumors of a merger with the XFL or the pandemic. There's really no crisis this year. Problems, yes, which we'll get into, but no crisis, which must be weird in a wonderful way. It is a wonderful thing. And, you know, really, it all started this uh, February with Pierre-Carl Palado taking over the Alouettes. And the way he did it, you know, he wanted a win-win arrangement with the league. We got that, and it kind of set the league on a really positive footing heading into 2023. I think that was really the piece of the puzzle we needed. Still some issues, though. And let's start with expansion, which you have touted since the beginning of your tenure. But it seems like there's no real progress in the Maritimes after all these years. Is it possible that you have to pivot somewhere else for a 10th team like, say, Quebec City? Yeah, you know, we are currently talking to a very interested, very capable potential owner. Uh, in the Maritimes? Uh, in the Maritimes. We've said we would pick up that conversation after Grey Cup. We will. But I have promised the governors that when we meet in December, I'll have an update. And I think there will be a point here that if we can't get it done now, we have to pivot. And that won't be being angry or frustrated with Atlanta Canada just to say maybe this wasn't our time, but we're going to give it one last kick at the can here and see if we can do it. But Quebec City is a very logical, very natural and high potential place. We haven't had any formal discussions there, but a place that we really need to open some doors. So Touchdown Atlantic has been this very successful thing you've done every year, doing games out in the Maritimes, and the touchdown has almost become a brand in itself. Could we see a touchdown somewhere else then, like Quebec City or somewhere else in the country? Well, in fact, that is very much the, the plan, is that that game should move around. It should help us to attract fans in different parts of the country. So those conversations are ongoing in fact I, I expect we will have something to say about our touchdown series in the not too distant future and can you confirm it would be a city outside of the Maritimes I, for next year? I, I would say it'll be a city in Canada okay, <laughs> okay. you uh, angered people in Quebec this week the media the Alouettes when there were no French signs in the building earlier in the week which is a bad look when the Alouettes are in the Grey Cup and you're talking about expansion to Quebec City yeah, well, James, look, there's been a lot of our LCF brand all around this week. In fact, I'm, I'm rocking my, my scarf that's got both CFL and, and LCF. We are always going to be an LCF and CFL league. There's no question about that. There is LCF branding in the building now. There, uh, there Was it is, just an oversight? Well, you know, I think what it is is that we, we kind of shift depending on the market we're in, uh, you know, more or less of English or French. Mm -hmm. But look, the really good thing is we sat down with Mark Waitman this week. Mark is a passionate advocate for Quebec football fans. He's a passionate advocate for the Alouettes. We said, Mark, let's sit down right after Grey Cup and we'll plot a new new re-energized re strategy for our brands and our and our language strategy and he was absolutely willing to do that so you know we're going to take this we'll learn from this and we'll move to the next level well you talked about the montreal ownership and there's been a real 180 as far as franchise stability goes where most of your biggest problems happened before in the biggest markets toronto and small crowds and and montreal and british columbia and now you have stable ownership there and bigger crowds in toronto and your problems are the two places that you never had problems before. Basically, the staples of the league were always Saskatchewan and Edmonton, but now they are concerns. How concerned are you about both of those markets? Well, uh, look, I'll start with Saskatchewan. You know, they... they that's a very strong franchise, and they have a very bright future in front of them. But we're not used they, to seeing empty seats. There. No, no, that's true. And look, they're they the team is frustrated as well that you know they had the same kind of season two years in a row, a lot of wins at the end. It fr it frustrated their fan base. The beauty of a passionate fan base is that when you when you are doing good things, they are with you. The pa the downside of a passionate fan base is when when you aren't doing good things, they get mad. But I believe the future in Saskatchewan's bright. In Edmonton, I think the single best thing that happened is Rick Lawlisher uh, taking over as the interim CEO and president. Rick knows our league. He's got a plan. Uh, you know, I've been talking with Tom Richards, the chairman of their board. They've got a plan. Look, the one thing you'd say about Edmonton, it's a huge fan base. They have to be re-engaged.
community ownership forever there, would you be open to private ownership for the Elks? You know, that's a decision that'll get me be made in Edmonton. It won't be made in the commissioner's office. I'm going to take my cues from the, you know, from from the Elks Board of Governors. Take my cues from Rick Lawlisher. But that's a decision that has to be made there, and is not uh, not really fair for me to speculate. You have a really diverse league when it comes to the players, when it comes to coaches. But walking around the terrific events here this week. It kind of looked like Canada in the 1950s with all white faces. What can you do about diversity in your fan base? Well, we're seeing it. I was in BC two weeks ago at the Western semifinal, and I was with Amar Doman. And as we walked around, as we walked around the tailgate area, we saw a lot of newer Canadians, a lot of a lot of the less traditional-looking CFL fans. In fact, you know that was the most heartwarming part of it. It was really a representation of what, you know, what Vancouver and the Lower Mainland has become—a very diverse ecosystem. We're seeing it there. I think we are seeing it here. We're obviously going to continue to work to attract new fans, new families. One thing about our game is it is it's it's the the price point makes it affordable for families. We want people to come and enjoy and be part of it. We hope everybody enjoys today and we hope we get a close game. Commissioner, we appreciate your time. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you on the stage after the game to present the awards and the biggest prize of all. Thanks James. Take care. There's the commissioner of the CFL, Randy Ambrosi as